When you're down and confused And you don't remember who you're talking to Concentration, slip away Cause your baby is so far away And there's a roar Session for the 134th commencement at Tufts University will now begin. Please welcome President Jean Mayer, the honorary degree recipients, the trustee escorts, and the members of the administration. University will be in order. May we learn to live, O oh God, as if we have but a single moment at our disposal. May an undying passion for learning drive us ever beyond the horizon in view. And may a generous love for humanity and for life itself prevent us from ever resting until respect for this planet is understood by all, and until universal dignity and justice are forever established upon this earth. Amen. my great privilege and pleasure to present the president of Tufts University, Dr. Jean Mayer, who will now address us. 
Welcome also to our distinguished honorary degree recipients and their families, to alumni back for reunions, to the families and friends of the graduating classes, and most especially to the graduates. We're all very proud of you. You've worked hard to be here today. We've known you as good students, good athletes, and good citizens of the Tufts community. We hope we will have the opportunity to know you better as active alumni of whatever school you're graduating from today, as well as of the university as a whole. As you graduate, you're entering a world that has changed profoundly since you entered Tufts. In many ways, this has been a year of revolution comparable to the worldwide movement in 1848, but with this additional bonus that these revolutions have largely succeeded. It means that all of us, and you in particular, are at the beginning of a new age, and many of the reflexes and basic assumptions which have ruled our entire way of looking at the world through a polarized view of the conflict of superpowers is now outmoded. As one of our trustees, Leslie Gerb, who from his editorial post at the New York Times contemplates worldwide affairs on a daily basis, said to me last week with admittedly a grain of salt, in the past six months, all competence in foreign affairs has become largely obsolete. Uh, this is said with uh, due, due respect for the Fletcher School and for the majors in international relations. It means that young people just graduating know almost as much about the political scene as long-time observers and perhaps have the great advantage over them of viewing the world without long-term prejudices which are very difficult to shake off. In spite of time constraints, I hope you will continue to show, uh, once you are out of this place, the same serious concern that you showed for world problems while you were here. Thank you. President Maillet will now confer the honorary degrees as voted by the Board of Trustees. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Robert D. Ballard to receive from your hand the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Shelby Cullum Davis to receive from your hand the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Weston Howland, Jr. to receive from your hand the degree of Doctor of Public Administration Honoris Causa. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present Elma Ina Lewis to receive from your hand the degree of Doctor of Arts Honoris Causa. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present Thomas R. Pickering to receive from your hand the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. I have the honor to present Evgeny Pavlovich Velyakov to receive from your hand the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. I have the honor to present H. Dudley Wright to receive from your hand the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present Robert Coles to receive from your hand the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. How do we find character for ourselves? And I might add here that in the 19th century, at this university and others across the land, character was a central preoccupation for both teachers and students. How does one learn to be good and thoughtful and considerate what is enough when it comes to do with character? In my profession in psychoanalysis and in psychiatry, we talk about character disorders. But what is character? Let me tell you about a teacher I met 30 years ago this year. She was a six-year-old child and she was going into an elementary school in New Orleans. 
She'd been sent there by a federal judge to get an education. I watched this little girl go to school, escorted by 75 armed men, federal marshals, because the police in New Orleans would not protect this girl's entry into a school building. And then she told me that having forgot to pray that morning where she should have prayed, she had an arrangement with the federal marshals as to where she said this prayer so that they could then quickly get her into the school building, she decided to stop and say the prayer right in front of those people. I said, well, Ruby, you couldn't let it go until you got into the school building. She said, well, I was praying for them, so I thought I'd pray right in front of them. I said, Ruby, why would you want to pray for them after all the things they say about you? And she said, well, I hear what they say about me, and I might as well pray for them. She said, I always say, please, God, please, God, Try to forgive those people because they don't know what they're doing. And I asked her, I said, Ruby, why do you say that prayer? And she said, don't you think they need forgiving those poor people? This Ruby knew. Ruby knew how to put that lesson to test. Don't think there aren't others around like Ruby. All over this country, children who might like her help us be a stronger nation and a better nation. Let us reach out to one another. Let us reach out to one another. But most of all, let us love one another as Arden put it lest we die as a nation and lest this planet die with us. Congratulations to all of you on this important occasion in your lives and I wish you Godspeed. In the name of the faculties of the university and by their authority, I declare that the candidates of the several divisions have been found worthy of recommendations for degrees. I now deliver into your hands, Mr. Chairman, the role on which is recorded the official recommendations of the faculties for the bestowal of these degrees. I want us to have driven you to contemplate the hard edges of reality as well as the especial delights of a mind, your own fully charged and engaged in its noble work. Class of 1990, you and I go on to new challenges, tested as we have been by the events of our era and confident that we can continue to make the world a better place. Go forth, great class. It is the time for you to commence and for me to lead elsewhere. We shall now have the address to the graduates by Myra Frazier, Wendell Phillips Award winner, Jackson College, class of 1990. Should greatness be measured in terms of material possessions and the amount of influence our nation is able to reject worldwide? Are we bound by obligations of collective responsibility or the pursuit of individual satisfaction? This contrast would lead many to ask, where is my place in American society? Many of you in the class of 1990 have taken up the challenge to prevent social catastrophe. Many of you have brought expectations of goodness and greatness to Tufts. Over the past four years, you have engaged in a variety of community service projects, such as working with the homeless, volunteering in soup kitchens, and working with children with special needs and the elderly. The commitment to social change will not end at graduation. Many of you plan to continue your involvement in public service. There are those of you that are planning to assume jobs in the public sector, and the gross salary is less than the total cost and expenses for one year of education at Tufts. 
There are those of you that are participating in Teach for America to bring quality teachers to where they're most needed in our nation's public school system. As a member of the Tufts community, these are the challenges that I have sought to embrace. They are the challenges that Langston Hughes sought to address in his poem, I Too. I would like to dedicate this poem to Anita Griffey, a member of the class of 1990 who was unable to share in this occasion with us because her life was prematurely cut short on April 21st. I too sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when the company comes. I just laugh, eat well, and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be at the table when the company comes. And nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am, and they'll be ashamed because I too am America. Thank you. Danielle Suzanne Shields. And Margaret Sch Schultz. Jane Beth Siblin Kumla. Neil Douglas Schwartz. Raymond Henry Sikor. Please give the S's a Let's hear it for the class of 1990.